How do? Live, Clive. Hey. Well, hey. Here we are again. So this is Cuddly Chris. That's his new nickname. Um, I put a video up on Friday. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Introduction to Chris. So today we are talking about a guest who was on the whole, what's the unit called again? Well, it's had many names, but uh, it was a special unit, CRC unit, uh, Close Supervision, CSU, it was called when I left. Close Supervision Unit yeah, at right. home. It's been rebranded many times. So, parting shot on the introduction to Chris, uh, we mentioned Robert Maudsley, or you mentioned Robert Maudsley, yeah? Yeah. Again, I'll put a link in the pinned comment to the first interview with Chris and a vlog I did on Robert Maudsley. Robert Maudsley um, initially picked up someone in London, I believe, who showed him pictures of children, inappropriate pictures, he killed him. He came in to the prison system for murder, deemed unfit to plead, went to Broadmoor. Broadmoor. At Broadmoor, him and a geezer called... Well, David Lant, but I knew him as David Cheeseman. David Cheeseman. Uh, got a sex offender in a cell, nine hours, tortured and killed him. They did. From there, they were both booted out of Broadmoor, back into the prison system. Robert Maudsley then went on to kill two people in one day, did he not? He did, yeah. I uh, believe that was in Wakefield. Another two sex offenders. I don't know who they were. Well, one guy was in, I think, for killing his wife, and the other guy was definitely a sex offender. Um. So, David Lamp, was he called? He had two names, and we knew him as David Cheeseman, but I know he also had the name Lant, so. When you went on the special unit at Hull, this lad was on there, yeah? He was yeah? already there, yeah. He was already on there. So, tell me about this guy. He gave you shivers down your spine when you actually, because he, he was so cold, so cold, um, very quietly spoken. But was he, he big in stature? No, no, he was a small, small fella. He, 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 he was nothing to look at him. You wouldn't think that he had the reputation he's got. But then again, size doesn't always indicate reputation. How long, roughly, have you any idea? Did you meet him at Hull after him and Robert Morsley murdered the guy at Broadmoor? Oh, well, I met him in. 95, 96. And it was about, was it about 83? Oh, it was definitely 80s. 80s. Early 80s, yeah, then, 83, yeah. 84. Yeah, it was, it was a long, long time after. Um, but no, he was very, very, very quietly spoken. Strangely enough, none of the other prisoners said anything to him. They never went near him. They, what did he, what did he look like? He was, I can't really describe, a little, little man with glasses. You, you, you'd, you'd think he was, um, how can I can't really describe him. You'd to look at him, you'd think he's he slight was, build. Very slight. You'd think he was a vicar. Really? You'd only need the colour on and you'd think he would fit the build to be a vicar. Do you do you know why initially he was in Broadmoor? Have you any idea what no. is? No, 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 I, I'll have a look and see yeah. see why he got locked up. Yeah. But no, um yeah, he was he was a very, very cold man and he was always one that I thought to myself, I've got to watch him because he, he had that unpredictable air about him not, not that he ever said anything or did anything but the fact that nobody bothered him nobody spoke to him told me that he's 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 real McCoy were he's, there some Andy lads on there oh then? big big Andy lads I mean Alan Lord we spoke about he was on there at the time um, Frank Burley who we just spoke about nobody said anything to him Nobody. It, it, it was he had his own little world on there. He used to come out, get his breakfast, go for his shower, and he worked in a little workshop doing braille. He used to uh, reproduce the Bible into braille. Really? Yeah, yeah. So chances are, if you come across uh, a braille uh, Bible, it was him. He he spent all his working day, even in the evening, even in association period, he didn't go and watch TV, he'd be back in his classroom preparing it for the next morning. Really? Well, that, that is quite... So I think he was a religious man, and this is why I say he would have he would fit the bill as a, as a, as a, a vicar. Um, but that's what he did. He would convert it into Braille. The Bible. You see that? I, I would consider that to be incredible. I always talk about it, I'm sure you agree, about giving 
people purposeful activity. Oh, the fact, the that, fact that in his own time... Yeah, he did, yeah. I mean, in his own time, he'd finish off what he was doing before he was locked up at tea time. He'd come out on the evening. Um, and most of the time, he was tidying the, the, his little office space, if you like, in the classroom, tidying it up and getting it all prepped for the next morning, making sure he'd got everything he needed. But he had a little, I say, he had a little machine in there converting the Bible. And it was... It's strange, really, when you when you think about the special units that they're on there for disruptives. They're on there for for, for some. That's what I was going to ask you. Extreme violence and some. Yeah, he was extremely violent because he murdered someone in prison. But yeah, but when, this is a long time after this. Isn't yeah, it? and you got the stark contrast between your violent armed robbers. Yeah. And uh, a couple of murderers on there, which uh, we'll talk about another time, I'm sure. Prolific murderers. Yeah. And then you have. And you have him there. Who's was, it, was he a violent individual in the prison system? I don't know, you know, because to be fair, I wasn't his personal officer. How, how long was he there while you were there? He was there from when I got on there for, for my two, full two and a half years. He was there. He was on that unit. Right. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna think now that maybe on a unit like that where you do get, you know, quite scary, quite violent characters, maybe he was kept there because. He made the numbers up and he was quiet and he kept himself to himself and in effect didn't cause you guys any bother. No, and I, and I guess as well, thinking about it, now you now you ask and now you mention it, could also be because I said it right at the beginning, he, was unpre he had that unpredictability about him, that air that you could think any minute, is he going to have you in a cell and murder you? You know, it was one of them creepy sort of feelings and I'm wondering if... If they had have said, no, you, 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 David, your time's your time's up on on here now. We think you've you've reached that point where we can reintegrate. I think perhaps the system was worried about putting him back into a system where he may have thought, you know what, what have I got to lose? What, did he get lifed off for that? He got lifed, I believe, for the for the murder of certainly for the for the one at Broadmoor. All of life. Or no, he wasn't a whole life tariff because I know he ended up getting. Captain Morsley Eve. got whole life tariff, mm -hmm. didn't he? I think he did. No, yeah. did he? Yeah, he did. He, he appealed. Because I've never I come across him. I say I know he was in Durham Seg when we took Frank Burley there. Um, and interestingly, sorry to digress, no, the no. staff at Durham actually said we got we got Bob Maudsley here, and he's actually coming out for his meals now, whereas before he he couldn't be trusted and didn't want to come out. He was making some steps to sort of converse with staff a little bit, where he could be trusted, heavily escorted of course, to come down and collect his meals for yeah. us. Whereas previous he was. Um, being served at his door. I don't know w what his situation is. Is, is he still alive, oh, mostly? As, as far as I know, yeah. the, the back end, I, I believe someone left a comment when I did the uh, the vlog about him that they're no longer using the glass cells, the two cells at yeah, Wakefield the D, now. They call it a D suite, don't they, that one? Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. A bit like the Silence of the Lambs type. Yeah, exactly. Think, so, yeah. so, this Cheeseman character, do you think there would always be politics? My point is, the, there's people who've, who've murdered and got out of prison, plenty. Um, do you think there's a lot of politics, the fact that, you know, someone has killed within the prison system, even though it was in Broadmoor High Security Hospital, there's, there's always going to be politics around that, um, you know, and they're always going to be threat special, and kept in special 100%, conditions. Hundred percent, because you think you imagine it, you're that person to to rubber stamp and say he can go back on normal location. It's about risk management. Yeah, isn't it? you imagine that. You're you're the person that said no. We've 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 uh, assessed him. We've we've got through all his personal office reports, psychology reports. We think he's ready now to reintegrate. And then the first day he reintegrates because he don't want to be there. He kills someone that speaks to him the wrong way, or comes against uh, a sex offender he doesn't like and murders somebody. I, I do believe there's a lot of politics involved like that. Whereas with a prolific armed robber or somebody that's, it doesn't. It, I'm not. Uh, de, I'm not decrying. Well, thing, well, normally an armed robber is going to be on normal location yeah, in any exactly, prison. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and that's unless, what I'm trying to get. unless you know the yeah. level of violence or disruption becomes deems too. That they yeah, kept, kept yeah. On a special Now, with unit. an armed robber, you could go to him and say, for example, right, Frank, your time's up. We think you've done remarkable on this unit. You're a totally different person to what you was when you came on. Yeah. It's time to slowly reintegrate. Yeah, we're going to take you to Full Sutton or Whitemore. 
meet the staff or they're going to come and meet you they're going to give you a plan of how we're going to get you back into mainstream somebody like that it, it's not a great risk is it really that if you've rubber stamped his move back into mainstream and he kicks off yeah if he assaults staff it's always bad if he assaults other prisoners it's bad but he isn't about to murder anybody but as far as you know had had he ever shown violence towards staff or cheeseman been, no yeah. not, not as far as i know on this unit, yeah. did they have like psychological input? Did you have civvies yeah, and yeah, we did. We had. And was there any compliance? So like Alan Law, did he have to have, or did he have to meet, or did he have to, you know, were there boxes to tick? Did he have to have work with a psychologist? Did he have to? Did he have targets and things like that? At first, no, they didn't because, as I say, they didn't talk. They didn't comply with anything. They just went about their own business. Um. Those that wanted to to comply could and did. But, you know, then there came a point in that unit where they said, no, it's not functioning how we think it should now. We've got to start making them sort of earn their place here. They will interrupt, uh, inter interact, should I say, with their personal officer at least once a week. They will sit down and have an half an personal hour Personal officer, just explain what a personal officer is. He's like the go-to sort of... Um, he's an officer on the wing. You, you, you all get assigned an, uh, a certain amount of prisoners, if they have any issues, you're their first point of call. If you can help them, you will. They can just come and talk to you about any old rubbish. It's somebody, it's a familiar face, a familiar name, that they can come and open up as much as they want or as little as they want. So we'll go back to Alan Lord, because yeah. you talked about Alan Lord in uh, the first chat we had. So how, how did anyone deem that his risk had come down to start because because the idea is yeah to get someone back in normal population then someone who's doing a long sentence cat c cat d open conditions you know you you're giving people chance to sort of reintegrate back in society but you, you're also giving them it's there's a risk in there there is and i think to be fair we're on them units there comes a time and i think i mean i had already left the unit no alan lord did go before i left the unit yeah um, but I believe he went to a SEG. Um, and if I'm not wrong, I think it was when we shut the unit down to re-roll it and have, have the, this interaction. They all went to SEG units across the country. And then we, as officers, were assigned to go and interview these prisoners in their SEG units and say, right, if you want to come back, this is the new... Right, so, again... And I so... think he perhaps didn't want to buy into the... I can't say for sure because right, I didn't so interview him. These terms and conditions then yeah, to come to your to unit. to come back to the unit. So, when I was in the private sector, we got we got a lot of prisoners who had been, you know, disruptive and the like. And, and the idea was they'd come to the SEG for a week's assessment, yeah. as it were, and then, hopefully, they would go on normal location to be treat like other prisoners. Is it one of them so, keep your head down for a week? Well, well back on. I, I would imagine Alan Lord, because he'd come from a unit, you're not going to yeah. put him on caving no, at strange no, ways, are you? Definitely not, now. So you're going to put him in a seg, you know, see how he's interacting or whatever, and then at some point, you know, again, about risk management, you want him on normal location, yeah, don't you? Yeah, and I think, he, to Alan's credit, he, he clearly did move back through the system. Um, and, and I think it came to, it must have come to a point, as it would with most rational thinking people, I want to be out of prison, this isn't a life, I want to be out, I want to be living my life. And in order to do that, they have to then, they have to comply to a degree. Of and I do. think it's all right, he, he never slept on a bed, he just slept on the floor, never a mattress. Um, things like that, that was his little protest and, and that was all about, well, you, you can take what you want off me, take me bed. Because I don't want it. Yep. So he had little in his cell, not that, next to nothing. So we had nothing to take off him. That was his mentality. Um, but I, I, I believe what he's done, he's worked his way through the system because he knows he wanted to be out. And he's a successful man now. He's running his own gym. Credit to him. But I think that that, man, that would have happened with, with Cheeseman. He'd realised that there would have been uh, light at the end of the tunnel. There'd be psychological reports. We, uh, we had uh, probation assigned to the to the unit. There's personal officer reports, of course. Yeah. Um, and I know personal officer reports aren't the be all and end all, but they do give a good insight. If into, you're a good personal officer, yeah. I, wherever I worked in prison, always people under my charge, as it were, 
I will put entries. K-Wing. Definitely. The staff always used to say, I ain't got time. No, yes, I would say. You just sat on your ass for half an hour, the wing's locked down. Yeah. Why ain't you done personal officer comment? Yeah. That's how I saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're but, very good at putting negative comments about prisoners down, aren't we? Yeah. But, but not, not, not so good. Not, not so good with the positive stuff. No. And, and I think that is as well, you, again, you've got a mix of staff where you've got those staff saying, fuck it, I'm not doing it. I know I've got time, but I'll just say I haven't. They get called out on it and say, well, you've just been sat having a brew for half an hour. You know, and, and they'll make all the excuses under the sun to justify why they didn't use that half an hour. Being paid to do what they should be doing, but yeah. they just sat having a brew. Now, we've all done it. We've all sat and had a brew. We've all had that bit of downtime. But, uh, no, I, I I think Cheeseman certainly must. He certainly worked his way through the system because I, I remember reading about him that he'd been on a home leave and he'd committed another offence on a, on a day release. So he was recalled. So... Does that mean he got to open conditions? Yeah, he would have definitely got to open conditions. Must have taken him some time, that yeah, then. Yeah, would have done. I mean, if you think about it, I left... Without looking, without checking on the internet, I can't remember... He's dead, he's dead now. He died a few years ago, but I can't remember In when In prison? He, no, he was out. Was he? Yeah, I believe he was out when Cheeseman when, when he died. But he's certainly on a day release, and he committed another offence, which got him recalled, and I believe he got out again. As I say, without doing too, too much delving I, yeah. I, I can't because when they go that's that's basically your interaction with them sort of gone you you don't forget them because some of them are infamous some of them you never forget because you think wow i locked him yeah. up and well you probably feel like you said he creeped you out a bit he you did yeah probably... and you know funnily enough there's some some i don't know if i've already mentioned this there's some staff that are still in the job now that had interactions with Maudsley when he was in hull seg yeah and they said he just looks straight through you they some hardened staff, and he they, they put sh he put shivers down their spines. He looked straight through you as if he wasn't even there. So that gives you an indication of how sort of how he how he th how he thought about people. If you can go and kill at, at random in a, in a jail, go and kill two people, and then say to the staff, "You're going to be too light on your roll," which is what he did. Which is what he he did. went in the office and said, "You're going to be too short, too off." It? Yeah, too off. Were. Yeah. Um, if you can do that. You, you, you're gonna be, you're gonna appear cold and 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 unfriendly to to most people, aren't you? Do, do you know what? I think now. I probably didn't think about it at one point. I kind of think, you know, what sort of childhood did this guy have? You know, he murdered somebody who was showing him images or of children initially on the out in London. He then kills a sex offender in prison. He then goes on to kill a new, at least one of them was sex offender inside. You know, that in itself, you know, murders are rare in prison, aren't they? Oh yeah. It was blatant. You know, I'm sort of thinking, what sort of bringing did that lad have to make him like that? And to a degree, I don't think the system helps people like that either. Well, it certainly didn't. You know, when you've got somebody like that, who's clearly disturbed because there's no other way of describing no. someone who's disturbed you know, people can get all political about things you call people definitely disturbed 100% and disturbed and I met some evil people well yeah. evil and and hatred are very strong words however I met people who are generally bad people but murdering someone in prison you know actually <laughs> you've got a feel for the staff that day haven't you you have that, that cannot you have, you know. Imagine. Well, can you? No, I can't. Can you imagine this? though? on that unit, they cooked all their own food, and there was a, a, a shadow board there with knives ranging from bread knives yeah. and meat knives yeah. down to your little potato peelers. Yeah. And all they had to do was, Gov, can I have the knives, please? So you get your your little key out, and as you open that cabinet, you go, which one would you like, David? Yeah. And an arm comes across. That one there, please, Gov. So you get that one and you think, right, I'll hand him it. Oh, every time. Shiver down my spine thinking, am I getting that in my back? Which one now? That one there, please, Gov. Yep, yeah, there. Bread knife. Thank you. Put his tally on it because obviously I identify who's yeah, got them. obviously. And as you lock in the... And I always used to go, oh, like that, shudder, thinking, is he still behind me? Am I getting that knife? And you look back, he's gone. You think, oh, thank fuck for that. Bit random this, but I'm going to ask you. Go on. When you were on unit, said yeah. you could cook their own stuff. Um, for me, 
probably one of the, the the thing that you know would send a shiver down my spine. I was confronted once uh, with a lad with two cups of hot water. You know, he's fronting me. I'm thinking I'm getting. That always scared me. That the boilers on the wings. Oh yeah. Boiling water. Yeah. You know, sugar in it, napalm, liquid napalm, some at worst assaults I've seen. With the kitchen thing, hot oil. Oh, oh and, yeah. There was a, a, a fella at. How, how close? Sorry. How close did you supervise him? You didn't. Okay. You didn't. There you go. You, the, the kitchen was sort of round the corner away. Um, you were supposed to, obviously, which we, we, we did. You'd have a wander around there and just sort of, all right, lads, all right, fellas, you know. Sometimes they go, yeah, not bad, gov. Or they'd just grunt at you, you know, in the days where they weren't talking to us. Um, we had a, a senior officer on there, quite a nice lady. She used to go down cooking with them. That was her way of... And, and they loved her for that because she was showing them how to make uh, chapatis and uh, Caribbean foods and things. Um, but in general, no, they weren't supervised. Um, the, the, the most supervision you got was putting their tallies on what tools they'd taken. Yep. And that's the frightening thing about when Frank Burley kicked off. All those knives were out in that kitchen. Yep. And we had a lad on, well, we had a couple of lads on there that had the potential. And it was only afterwards, when you're coming down on that debris thing, wow, that could have gone all wrong. We said, yeah, no, them fucking knives Is that right when you start kitchen. thinking about you things? Do. What you if, do. what if? Because while it's all going off, you're dealing with Frank waving a table leg about. Yep. Another one comes up to him, ushers him away, calms him down. Look, Gov, he's going to walk. Please, just, just let him go back to his pad. He's not going to kick off. We've yep. calmed it down. Yep. But then in the cold light of day, you sat up in the tea room. Some people are like, fucking hell, I can't believe how close that came. And all them knives are out there. At any moment, they could have gone and got them knives That's instead of so wished. Though, it? it is next level, but the potential's there. Some of them are in there for murder. So you, you can't put it past any of them to think, well, this is going off big style now. I'm ready for moving. I've had enough. Let's go. Riots do start with, with an odd one incident, don't they? Yeah, yeah, of course they can. They start with an, an odd incident. A flashpoint, of course And they at can. that point, they might have even thought, he's knackered this up for us all now. We're all going to get banged up. They're going to tighten things up a bit. Yep. You know, they're showing a bit of intent here that he's not allowed to have them stamps. They're only stamps, but they've actually said no now. They've actually said no. And we're not used to them saying no in such a way. Yep. You never know what goes through their minds if to say, well, they might even shut this unit now. Is what is it worth staying here if they're going to start saying no? If petty things to to us, but big things to them. And you, so yeah, it was it was a bit a bit of a panicky moment. As, as a final question, uh, and your valued view on this, when you went on that unit at Hull, were you interviewed to go on that unit? No. Um, but. Did the people, you know, the gaffer, the governor over the unit or whatever, knew who you were? Were you deemed suitable and appropriate? Would they put someone who'd been six months in the job on that unit? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I tell you what, before, because it was a core permanent set of staff, I mentioned, I think I mentioned it in the first interview, that the you was very lucky to get on there for a shift. If yep. they were desperately short, rather than lock it down, you did go on there as a, as a, as a guest. But basically, they just kept you as a guest. Yeah. You just didn't, used you uh, as yeah. a general body. You didn't interact. You was making the numbers up. You could yeah. interact, but again, they didn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was... Um, yeah, you was only a guest on there very occasionally, but you had your core set of staff. You're not interviewed to go on there, but certainly I don't... I th no, I never knew of anyone. So what, what do you think now? We'll call it solitary, segregation units. Yeah. Care and separation units, yeah. as they want to call them now, yeah. which makes, you know, it's just some political bullshit. But what what do you think? Because I've had people message me, one young lass, just joined prison service, uh, just out of training, uh, she was going to a segregation unit. Straight out of training, 22-year-old lass being put in a segregation unit. What do you think of that? No, wrong, wrong. B because... It it, it, you you would have concerns for her. I, I would, yeah, of course you would. Um, it, you, you, again, it's not about being roughy tufty, but in segregation, you got to remember that some of those lads are in that segregation for good reason. Yeah. 
they might have assaulted staff at will on a landing and it's like whoa let's have you you're not staying on here we'll take you down there we'll work with you and we'll obviously we're gonna have to assess you and find out what's making you tick yep. you can't have a, a, a young naive inexperienced officer down there who's uh, the risk towards them is 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 is, is quite big actually because prisoners latch on as well of course they do they know when someone's new like I said with Alan Lord, he knew I was new on that unit. What he didn't know was I was an experienced officer. But had I been an, a, a brand new officer on that yep. unit, that would have that would have had far-reaching repercussions for me. I'd have probably been asking, no, oh, I, I, I can't work on here. But because the experience I was sat next to who had been on there a year or so already, he's already spent, he was two years senior to me, so, You've got someone to look up to. Yeah, with him saying... The fact that you're sure, um, it wasn't a reference to that. <laughs> no, serious. On a but, serious but, note, though, yeah. you've got someone to look up to, haven't you? you yeah. You could, you yeah, know, you could look at them and say, how do I deal with yeah. this? Yeah, and, and they did say, just just leave it. Just leave it. Just ignore him. He's not going to do anything. Don't worry. Yeah. He's like this because you're new on here. He thinks he can intimidate you. Yeah. And I'll be honest, he did to start with. I'm thinking, fucking hell, what have I done? What have I done? It's not all snooker and table tennis after all. But it was, it, it was, and that's that's not a clever thing. It's just the way it was. They didn't want to talk to us. So what what do we do all day? Just just sit there twiddling our thumbs. Those yeah. games there no, to I, play. I completely. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, very enlightening. I'm sorry, I can't help you anymore with the cheeseman. No, no. Thing, uh, is, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed your your view of it. You know, um, he's probably the less famous of the two, Robert Morsley. Uh, yeah. However. Yeah, great insight. Um, I might go and have a look with him, find out about that geezer. You know, see see what happened to him or whatever. But uh, cuddly Chris, as you will be forever known well, now. Next time I'll be about four stone. The next time you see me. Pleasure, mate. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Cuddly Chris. Thank you. We'll have Cheers. him back. I'll see you. Thank you.